All right. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Rob Wheeland. I am an author, a game designer, and professional nerd. And I am here with the lovely and talented Mike Selinker. I wish I could be a professional nerd. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, he is here to show me how to play uh, his new, but also kind of not new, yeah, kind of. Uh, card game, uh, the Apocrypha Adventure Card Game. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting way to phrase it because... It's the spiritual successor to the Pathfinder Adventure card game, but it's also the spiritual what's predecessor. It, what's the predecessor because we, uh, when we were coming up with the idea for the Pathfinder Adventure card game, what would become it, we didn't have anything to set it in, so we set it in this weird horror world of modern day and, and stuff like that. And then we made Pathfinder, and we're like, that weird horror world was pretty cool. We should go back and do it again do it like for real and so um, we uh, came up with this idea about like your memory is completely fragmented and you have to build up all of your superpowers over time by gaining your memories back mm -hmm. and then as you uh, looked around this world you're these saints so you can see all the monsters in the world but the bad news is they can see you too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so uh, we sort of took those two thoughts and then blew it out into a massive multi-part campaign. Uh, Box One is the world. It just came out on Thursday. I think it went really well. Uh, Box Two, the flesh, will come out with four more chapters and then uh, the devil will follow that. Uh, it's just a really big but really deep game that people seem to be having a great time with here at Gen Con. Uh, now, in addition to designing the game, you have tasked some uh, pretty heavy hitters to help develop the, the stories that you're going to be yes. telling within the game. I um, realized very early that this was going to be uh, almost a literary game, right? I mean, it was. I'm a pretty good writer, but uh, we had this idea that what we would make is these memory fragments, and they needed to feel like you were really fracturing your, you know, regaining your memories, for, and they had to be really weird. So I was like, I could write all those, but I don't think it's going to be as good as if it's if it's really a wide variety of authors. So I went to get Pat Rothfuss and Aaron Evans and Jerry Holkins and Kid Johnson and Matt Pormack and Keith Baker and, uh, you know, all these, all these amazing people, uh, Chris Straub, and, and then some of my team jumped in. And the, now we have these this incredibly rich world that we never would have had if I did it myself or just asked my team to help out. Um, in addition, we got the most amazing artists to envision the weirdest things they could possibly come up with. And so, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm reasonably demented. I could come up with a crazy world on my own, and my name is kind of big on that box, but it's the collaboration of a hundred, hundred plus creatives. Very cool. Now, uh, the Pathfinder Adventure card game is very well known for being uh, able to put you in the shoes of very iconic characters. Yes. Uh, and uh, this game, in particular, also seems to have a, a, a an excellent collection of characters that are very flavorful and very unique. Um, so, are there any characters that you kind of want to that? You want to highlight that you cool. like? I mean, we've got, we got some of them out here right now we could take a look at. Um, so let's let's just go around the table, all right? Okay. So uh, here we have Frank Block. He's a bad cop. He's from Chicago. I also uh, spent a lot of time doing things around crime in Chicago. Well, Being a bad cop in Chicago? I mean, <laughs> not I mean, not that anybody not that anybody would know, right? Okay, but, that's fair. But, that's uh, fair. but yeah, but so I got to know people like Frank, you know. But his job is actually. He works the night shift where all the werewolves and werebears come out. And they're, all of our street gangs in Chicago are, are lycanthropes. Mm -hmm. They control different parts of the train line. It's all, all very, very warriors-like. Um, let's see, we have Deanna Jones here. She's uh, the world's luckiest grandma. Uh, she, uh, she And she fights monsters. Oh, yeah, no. She's 60-plus <laughs> years old. Uh, but she just seems to come out of these scrapes just fine. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, she's from Vegas. Uh, we have Gabriella Vargas. She's a one percenter. 99% um, of the bikers in the 
uh, world are law-abiding citizens, mm -hmm. and she thinks that's great, mm -hmm. but that's not her. Right. Right. She has a street. She has a biker gang, and she uh, sawed off shotguns, and and. And so forth. Then finally, over here, we have Dr. Z's. He's an unlicensed necrosurgeon. What does that mean exactly? Well, I mean, necrosurgery is. Also, how do you get certified to be a necrosurgeon? <laughs> well, he doesn't know <laughs> okay. because he's unlicensed, you see. Um, but, uh, but yes, uh, so he uh, maybe spends a little too much time with dead things or things that are on their way to being dead by the time he's done with them. That's right. Right? Uh, and none of these people are like the best people in the world, but they're, and they're all kind of a little bit troubled and on the edge, but they're, they're on the side, they, they can all agree that there shouldn't be an apocalypse. I, and so, yeah, I feel like 95% of the people in the well, world agree with that. Well, sure, but these guys can do something about it, or at least they think they can. So, uh, so yeah, and then we have lots, lots more. Um, the the characters we have are really rich and enjoyable, and they're all illustrated by Mark Molnar's uh, Pixeloid Studios crew, and they look fantastic. So yeah, it's 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 really a great group. Awesome. So, uh, I guess maybe let's talk about how you would, you know, like what do you do in the game? Like what's a sure. uh, well, a character uh, will have start out with just like. These four virtues, uh, mind, soul, body, and rage, that are around the outside. And they're all in different orders because table position matters a ton in this game. Point. So uh, where your virtues are pointing are who you can affect with those virtues. Okay. Uh, uh, and that's true about a lot of other things. There are all these symbols that point various directions. Down is toward you, left, right, up is toward people at your nexus, and so forth. Okay. Um, they all have uh, some omens. These numbers also say how many cards of that type they have in their deck and how many dice they roll of that kind uh, when, they do stuff. when they do stuff. Yeah, and so um, then they also have some omens <laughs> omens in their deck and uh, hand size and, and all that and some superpowers. That's a normal character. That is like, okay, it can do what it does and it does it pretty well and you're happy with that and so forth. But over the course of the game, you gain all these fragmented memories and those give you brand new superpowers. Those can have up and down effects. Okay. So a um, a starting character is just flat. They'll do what they want to do. It's just a straight up deck, but then yeah. you get these other. Things. That's right. Whereas a character with lots of these fragments is more like this. They're okay. they're doing great things, and then they're like, "Could you stop doing that, please?" <laughs> uh, so you're always like, "We need to introduce new players to this game, so that we can get some new characters in here that keep us a little more stable." Mm -hmm. um, you go around, you, there's no canonical way to start, end, or play the game. There's a rule book that can adapt to all of that. But your structure cards and your mission cards tell you what you do. There's 99 missions across all the games, mm -hmm. and they're all very different. They um, fundamentally, during the course of the game, you will poke around in various nexuses which have both hope and doom sides. The uh, doom sides are worse than the hope sides. Right. The art's a little different on both sides. The um, you'll find gifts and threats. You'll put the gifts in your deck. You'll fight the threats and get rid of them. You'll find ways to to deal with super bad guys. You'll something different will be true every time. Sometimes you'll play multiple missions. Sometimes you can jump around from mission to mission, chapter to chapter, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just a, a, a sort of rich storytelling game. The weirdest thing about this game is uh, that there's two modes to play it in. The first is co-op mode against the game, a little like the Pathfinder when you enter card game. Mm -hmm. but, the, but it instantly converts into RPG mode, guided mode, where there's a game master and they just take the, the position of, I'm going to arrange the cards that you're going to confront how I want them, but otherwise the game is pretty much the same to you. I get to, you know, deal with all the consequences, try to keep up with you as the guide. But uh, and then if you like that, you can keep doing that, or you can switch back to co-op mode, go back and forth in the same game, and nothing changes. Okay. Which I don't think that's ever been done before, and I think it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's been interesting uh, for me to see a lot more mm -hmm. games that are trying to sort of stake out. The middle ground yeah. in between this is only an RPG where it's pencils and dice and blah, and this is only a board game where it's just cards and cards and dice and blah. Yeah, I, uh, I started 
playing with that, you know, with the Marvel Super Heroes adventure game and then with Betrayal at House on the Hill and mm -hmm. so forth, and I was just like, this is, this is a great place for me to be. So with Apocrypha and the Ninth World and Thornwatch, those are all really sort of different ways to find a middle ground between the expressive storytelling games that I really like and the, you know, sort of more crunchy, I want to get, I don't want to get my dice out, I want to, I want to get the cards in the game I want, you know, stuff like that. Well, these games and uh, the other ones that you mentioned, like Betrayal and House of the Hill, are also excellent uh, gateway opportunities so. for people um, who want, who are maybe more hardcore tabletop uh, RPG players that want to introduce their friends and, their, and you know, and maybe they've approached him about joining a game and they've been like, I don't know about, you know, signing up for a three-year campaign. Exactly. Well, fine. Play one game of this or one game of uh, Betrayal, you know, yeah. and yeah. see how that goes. And we, then we'll take those baby steps forward. We were really surprised when we released the Pathfinder game because we thought it was going to be like all RPGers or lapsed RPGers who were playing it. it turns out that the majority of our audience had never played an RPG. Wow. And then we we're introducing them to this vast RPG world and they're like, let me go buy some of those books, see what's going on in there. Hopefully they, you know, found a, found a different path. Well, I know I quite enjoy the uh, the, the phone adaptation. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Pathfinder Adventures because you get to play it and you don't have to worry about, oh, I yeah. can't because I'm washing my hair. Right. No, I can't. And, I mean, the other great thing about it um, is that it doesn't have a setup and teardown time. Yeah. Right? Which is fantastic. You play, like, five games in an hour. Um, this game, we learned a lot from making the Pathfinder game. This game, we were like, okay, what if this game kind of cleaned itself up as it went along? And so the game actually has significantly shorter teardown time mm -hmm. than Pathfinder or Betrayal. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're consciously aware that people are are playing our games to uh, to get their fix, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To get, whether it's an RPG fix or a, a dice rolling fix or whatever, and we want to just keep going back to them with new content, new surprises, so that when they play a game of ours, they're always like, oh, wow, that something happened in that that has never happened. And that's happened all weekend long. Um, I had a, I had tons of things go down this weekend that I just never saw before in the game. Well, games are about, uh, a lot of what games are about, for me anyway, are about creating stories and experiences that your friends, you, you, that you replicate with the friends that nobody else will ever experience. Yeah. And being able to, like, you know, one of the best parts of coming to Gen Con is running into your old friends and, being, and talking about, you know, catching up, and then also, oh, do you remember that weird elf character that you played? That's right. And, it was, and, and these games still give you that because because they they do have that narrative element, um, but they also aren't, you're, they don't require the same type of buy-in yeah, that, that RPGs I mean, I to. wanted to just make sure with all these, with both of these games, and I guess a couple of those, there was no barrier to you being a game master. Mm -hmm. If you, that's what you want to do, do it. And if you decide you don't like to do it, stop doing it, keep playing the game. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think we probably came closer on this game than we've ever come on on that. And I think that a lot of people, it will be their first time in the, the GM chair. And then, you know, maybe the same with Thornwatch. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll, they'll be like, oh yeah, I got this. Well, I, I think a lot of, I, I think games like this will in future years much like how people refer to like hero quest sure. of that sort of that was my first steps into the yeah. the, the, the broader world well so. i totally get that with betrayal house on the hill all the time multiple times this convention of like this was my first hobby game this was my first and so i have hopes that like this game and uh, our others will have that same impact that's awesome so this uh this box came out here yes. and but there are other boxes that are on the right this is Box one is the world. Uh, it contains two chapters, Candle Point, which is where we ruined the sort of equivalent of Pat Rothfuss's hometown of Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Oh, that's, okay. Yeah, we, we were like, this is what we're doing, Pat. And he was like, yeah, that's great. He listed all the things and we wrecked it. <laughs> Being from Wisconsin, I was like, these all sound real familiar. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where is this? Where yeah. is this? <laughs> like, he would just say, I would say, tell me all the things you love about your hometown. I was like, check, 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 check. Okay, this happened. Blown up, blown up, blown yeah, up. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so that's the world. It's got <laughs> Skinwalkers and Candle Point in it. Skinwalkers is the one with Matt Forbeck doing the doing the work there. Mm -hmm. Then the next set is called The Flesh. Uh, the Flesh uh, 
uh, contains four more chapters, uh, and then the um, the devil is the conclusion to this this particular block, um, which we call the Revelation block. I don't know if there'll ever be any more blocks, but if we want to start the next story, we would start with a new one with, mm -hmm. with some other block, and. Uh, and then, uh, so when we're done, it's about 1,500 cards. It's about, uh, uh, it's 20 dice, maybe 100 pages of story, uh, 20 characters. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And uh, it's, it looks like it's a good opportunity for people who uh, want to get, the, get some of that RPG experience, but not necessarily uh, dive into a massive amount of, of time and effort. And it also looks like it's a great uh, choice for Fan, people who are fans of urban horror and fantasy and shows like you know, Supernatural and X-Files and things like that. I'd like to think so. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time here, Mike. Always. Uh, it's glad to talk to you. Uh, so uh, please uh, check out the uh, Apocrypha Adventure card game. My name is Rob, and I'd like to thank you for uh, joining us, and please, always nerd responsibly. <laughs>